Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Dr. Glenn Vo, and welcome back to another episode of our podcast. And I'm super excited. I am super excited because I have the queen of evergreen herself. This is Brittany Long. Brittany, what's up? What's up, Ben? I'm so glad to be here with you today. Man, I am so excited to get you on. And guys, I have to tell you something. I mean, she is just doing so many amazing things. And when people are doing amazing things, they are really busy. And I literally have been just harassing her at our masterminds on Voxer, on Messenger. I think I've communicated with it through every channel because she's <laughs> just doing so many awesome things. So I'm super happy that you're here. So, Brittany, there's going to be some people who don't know who the queen of evergreen is. And guys, if you don't know, you're about to learn, right? You're about to understand here. But, but Brittany, just give us like a quick bio of like what you do, what your business is all about and, and how you got the name, the queen of evergreen. Absolutely. So our company is Win With Systems and we help business owners write emails that make the money again and again and again. So any kind of automated email or evergreen as we call it, those are the kind of emails we make. So abandoned cart emails, uh, year long sequences, anything that you can make money from and you set it up once and then you don't have to think about it. And I got that because I am obsessed with evergreening as much as possible in my business because we have a little one that I want to spend as much time as possible with and I figured why don't I want to like, why wouldn't I want to have everything that I can with my family and with my business at the same time? I love that. I love that. And we're going to dive into that later on, but I'm going to ask you this. So you have a very unique story and I, I want to just lay that out there because you, you, you are a teacher. Like you started, you taught at a school and everything. So talk about like how long you, you were teaching for and what kind of moved you on? Because we're in this podcast, we talk a lot about side hustles and side gigs and, and growth and, and all that. So share your story there. You know, you were a teacher and how did you transition from being a teacher to being like the queen of the evergreen here? Yeah, so I didn't really know what I wanted to do after college. I thought, well, I my dad was a teacher for 37 years and I like helping people. So I thought, well, it makes sense that I would do something like teaching. And so I went into teaching and uh, for the first few years, I really, really enjoyed it. I liked helping people. I liked feeling like I was making a difference. But as things progressed, I started to see that in a lot of cases, I was working a lot harder than my students, you know, to help them learn these things and get these grades and stuff like that. And they just weren't quite as interested in some of the things as I was hoping they would be. And so this idea that I went into teaching thinking, I'm going to change the world. And obviously that was maybe a little unrealistic, but that's what I went into it, hoping that it would become. And I would have probably kept teaching for a very long time because it feels safe. It feels secure. Yeah. And except uh, about two years into teaching, teaching, I had a cancer scare. And I remember sitting in the doctor's office, you know, waiting to hear back and stuff like that. And I remember sitting there, a doctor came in that I had never seen or talked to in my life. And, you know, she said, Mrs. Long, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have cancer. It's aggressive. We found it in three different places. And so I walked out of the doctor's office that day thinking I would not be around a year from now. And the thing that I, I think I'll never forget is the regret that I felt as I sat there, as we drove home, thinking about the things that I missed out on with my family, with my husband, because I was so busy grading and, and pouring myself into other people's family and other people's kids. And that's really what kind of spurred this idea that I need to be doing something different because I knew in that instant that teaching is not, at least teaching in a public school, that was not what I was meant to be doing. And there's some people that absolutely it is, but I was not one of them. And I knew deep down that, I knew that deep down for a while, but it was safe. And I thought, well, I'll figure it out later. I have time. And then all of a sudden I was faced with this idea that I might not actually have the time that I thought that I did. Yeah. And I wasn't willing for my last year on earth. Cause I genuinely thought that's what it was. I wasn't willing for my last year on earth to be filled with something that, that wasn't what I was supposed to be doing, the fullness of the expression of self. And so two weeks later, I went to a specialist because the, the doctor said she couldn't give me any more details. So for two weeks, I've been, I thought on about this. I molded over. I went to the specialist and she said, no, I don't know why they told you that it's pre-cancer cells. We can get it with one simple surgery. Wow. And so <laughs> it was quite a roller coaster. And I'm yeah. so thankful for that. So thankful that they were wrong, of course, but also so thankful that it happened because it really woke me up to this idea that I was sleepwalking through 
you know, this job that I was doing that I didn't want to be doing anymore. And yeah. so I wanted to leave. I didn't know what to do. And I basically just complained for two years. <laughs> that I, <laughs> and I'm, I'm so embarrassed to say this. I, I, I hate, I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, when you don't know, sometimes uh, that you just kind of get this, uh, stuck in this cycle. And so I tried like MLMs and stuff like that. And they did not work or I did not work for them or they did not work for me. I don't know, whatever it is. But one thing I got out of that was the book, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And that was the first I time that I book. so good. Right. And it like woke me up to this idea that I have personal responsibility, that I can, I can greatly affect the outcome of my life. And that blew my mind. And so from there, I started taking action. I started going to this online, like marketing thing in Orlando and for anybody that has a full-time job right now. So I was teaching full-time and it was on Thursday nights. So I would drive an hour and a half there, drive an hour and a half back. And so, and then go to school the next day. And I was exhausted every time, but it was with people that were further along than I was. And I remember very distinctly one time going and there's this person named Brad there. And I was complaining about teaching, complaining about how I wanted to be out. And he said, well, Brittany, you've committed to it. Nobody's holding you hostage there. You're there. So either get out or commit to staying for the rest of the year and do and like use your time to figure out what you're going to do next. And I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, you don't know what I'm dealing with. How dare you? <laughs> but then as I thought about it more, I was like, what would happen if I listened to what he said? And so I yeah. did. And it completely changed my life because I started taking action instead of just complaining. Wow. Um, so what? that's Quite an a, amazing quite a roller coaster. story. <laughs> what an amazing story. And I will say this. I mean, so many people, so many people out there, they always tell themselves, well, you know, I'm going to wait until something is done before I do something else. I'm going to wait until I retire to travel. I'm going to wait until the kids are out of the house so I can start doing this project I always love. I want to wait until, right? And the thing is, is that what your story just demonstrated there and what you learned too is that we're, we're not immortal, okay? Everyone lives life like they're immortal, okay? Like, hey, I have a lot of time. In reality, what you went through, what all of us have went through during the pandemic, we realize how, how short and how fragile life is, right? And of course, you had this big dream. And I'm so excited that you had that revelation, Brittany, because I'm going to tell all you guys who are watching, who are listening, that I actually am a client of Brittany Long's and she does amazing work and what she does with her email again it's like magic I, I <laughs> queen of evergreen is great I want to I want to call her like the wizard of emails or something <laughs> like that something else because it's just so amazing and I, I want to talk about that so you know you you went through a bunch of different side gigs like mm -hmm. I did as well and you found this niche that is so amazing that is again helped me out so much. You helped so many other entrepreneurs out and there's other businesses out there. I, I kind of feel like you're like the best kept secret, right? You're like the secret weapon here. Talk about the email sequences, how that helps entrepreneurs and companies and how is it more than just, because when people think about emails, they're like, okay, so I do an email blast, right? I'll like write a couple of emails and, and that's that. But until I met you, Brittany, there's like so much more and you're, you're literally like losing money, okay? And you're also leaving money on the table if you're not doing it right. So explain that. Talk about the art of like the email sequences. Yeah, so what a lot of people do is they write broadcast emails that go out once that are time sensitive or talk about current events or they're like, hey, we're launching this thing. Mm -hmm. And those emails are great. They're helpful. There's a place for them for sure. But if you don't, always want to be the one writing the emails if you don't always want to be on if you want to be able to take time off and still have money coming in without you having to show up all the time then having a sequence there is like that safety net it's like that yeah. business insurance policy that's there for you when you're out sick when your kids out sick when you just are burnt out and you need a break like whatever it is where you need to step back and the unfortunate thing is that a lot of times people come to me after this fact like after they're going through something very difficult yeah. and they're like I really need a way to make money right now. And I have this email list and I, but I don't have like the, the mental capacity right now to do it myself. Can you help? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to shift that so that people come to us before those things happen, because it's not really a matter of like, if something happens, it's when something happens. And so we want to help you safeguard your business by having those sequences that, that send out automatically for you. So I have sequences that I've written years ago now that are still bringing in revenue every single day for us wow. um, and for, for people that I've written for. And the beautiful thing is that it's not just about the revenue. It's also about the messages that 
that I get and that they get that are like, thank you so much. This is exactly what I need to hear today. And it's so cool because I still get to have an impact on something that I did a few years ago. And so for the, for your audience, it's really great because it's helping them, it's nurturing them, it's, it's bringing them to a place where they can say yes to their, to your offer if it's right for them, but also bringing them to a place where they don't feel quite so alone. And that's a really beautiful thing. Well, you know, and I want to highlight this too, because we have a lot of uh, listeners and viewers who have like their own small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. They have their own coaching programs, their own small businesses. And I want to let you guys know this, right? You know, sometimes if you're at an event and you're talking to someone, you can sell from the stage, right? Like it's done there. Or if you're at a conference, if you're one of the companies that subscribe to my podcast, you have a booth and people come there and you can close the deal, right? But we all know human nature is that people not always buys right away. They don't act right away. They actually kind of like want to think about it, right? And what I love about your emails is that for the people who are kind of thinking about things, you're able to use these email sequences to kind of stay in front of them, kind of let them know like, hey, I'm here. And again, Radio likes to say, these are like nurturing emails and stuff like that. And I love it because again, not everyone's going to act right away. So talk, Brittany, talk about that. Talk about how you know, these email sequences that you've worked with all these amazing entrepreneurs, how you've helped them, maybe like, maybe they didn't close the deal right away, mm -hmm. but over time it actually gave their audience value. And then they came back later. Talk about those instances. Yeah. So they get to see a higher lifetime value of their customer because their customer is not only buying one thing from them, which a lot of times we see that happening where a customer buys one thing from you and then they never hear from you again until the next launch. And by that point, they're like, oh, OK, so this person just wants to sell me all the time and like doesn't really care about anything. And so by having those emails that continue to nurture them and sell them, it gives them the opportunity to see what else you have. Because that's another issue is that a lot of times your people don't know everything that you have. They just know the one thing that you bought because you're not talking about the other stuff. And with the nurture or with, with the sequences, you don't have to think about selling all the time because it's doing it for you. And the way we do it specifically, we set it up. So when they get to the offer email, they've already had their objections busted by the emails before it. And then the email after it really reinforces that with a success story and then sends them back to the offer. And so it's a lot of soft selling and selling without, without them feeling like they're being sold to. So it's a win for them and it's a win for you. Well, I'm going to say this. As, again, I'm speaking from my own experience and I'm also speaking from other people who work with Brittany. I mean, she does an amazing job. Her team does an amazing job. And at the end of the day, I mean, you know, I'm busy doing all these other things, you know, as entrepreneurs and people who own different companies and whatnot, we're busy doing those things. This is her, this is her jam. This is what she knows how to do, right? So again, it's so helpful there. Uh, Rini, let me ask you this. So, you know, obviously you work with a lot of entrepreneurs such as myself, but who else do you work with? What have you, you know, who have you worked with? Who are your like ideal clients? Yeah, so we love working. Well, I let me say this first. So anybody that we work with, they have to pass like this first test. And it's, do you want to make more money? And if the answer is yes, great. And do you want to make a difference? If the answer is no to either of those, then it's not the right fit. Yeah. We want to work with people that care about making an impact and actually care about the people that they're dealing with. And we don't, we don't want to work with people that are like, I'm just here to make a buck or people that are like, I just want to impact the world and not make money too. Like we want to help with both of those. Sure. And so we've worked with a lot of different people, of course, creating coaches, clients, consultants, pet psychics, pet trainers, like pretty much any niche that you can, DJs, yeah, yeah. any niche that you can think of, like we've worked with them and uh, it's really fun for us. We get to see all these different personalities and learn all these different things we wouldn't have learned otherwise, but it's cool because it works for everybody. Like anybody that has an audience that they want to sell more to, but also help more, it works for them. I love it. I love it. Again, I mean, that I'm so excited to have you on here because again, you've You've gone, you've, I mean, you created this great business that uh, helps so many people, people like myself. And again, you know, for those who are watching and listening, I mean, you definitely need to reach out to Brittany here, but we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to shift gears. And I always, there's a segment that I always do. I call it the, the big entrepreneur three, right? So uh, Brittany is a, an amazing entrepreneur. She's a super mom, a super wife, amazing entrepreneur. I mean, she checks all the boxes, but now we're going to have you, Brittany, put your entrepreneur uh, hat on right now. So I'm going to ask you that we call this segment, the big entrepreneur three. And the first question is share a productivity tip that you use for entrepreneurs that could help out entrepreneurs. So I think the biggest way you can get more out of your day 
is by not letting fear stop you from doing the things that you know you need to do. I see a lot of people, yeah, (laughs) I see a lot of people that get stopped in their tracks because they're like, well, what about this? What about this? What if this happens? What if this happens? And at the end of the day, you are capable of so much more if you just kick that, that fear out. A few years ago, I was in a position, it was a brand new position I had never done before and a lot of tasks I had never done before. And we had a very short turnaround time and I did not have the time to to think about how inadequate I was and how I didn't know what I was doing and things like that. The only option I had was to learn and learn quickly. And I realized I had been spending so much time before that just sitting in fear and worry and wonder and what if I mess up and what if I fail and all those things and they just aren't serving you. And so if you're finding yourself stuck in that or stuck in imposter syndrome, essentially it's keeping you from success. And so kick that, kick that right out and just focus on learning and growing instead. Just, just tell that, just tell that negative voice just to shut up, right? Just go away. Right. I love that. That's such a big thing. And I'll tell you what, I, I've suffered through that through the years and sometimes it creeps back and you know it's just like a bad habit right sometimes you'll have bad habits creep back and then you just have to have to beat it down and tell it to go (laughs) away so I love it okay so the second question the big entrepreneur three is share a tool it could be digital or non-digital it could be tech non-tech that has helped you as an entrepreneur so I really like the app otter.ai. It's O-T-T-E-R.ai. And it's a voice recording memo. It's like you get, I think it's like 600 or 6,000 minutes for free in their free plan. But the reason I love it is because as I go on a walk, uh, I usually have my best ideas when I'm like moving, like on a walk or, Zoom <laughs> or something like that. But if I don't have pen and paper with me, I lose it by the time I'm done. (laughs) And so I like that because I can just record a memo to myself or to my team and send it over. And then for our emails too, I do that as well. Sometimes I'll be walking and I think of something. So I just kind of record myself talking out what I want the email to sound like. I can do it myself then, or I can send it to my team. And it also does a transcript. Uh, So it's just a faster way to get that information out to whoever you need to get it out to. You know, as, as someone who not only has worked with Brittany, but is a friend of Brittany, she does come up with ideas all the time. I, I get posts like, hey, that's in the middle of the night. Anyone else getting <laughs> ideas at the time? I'm like, what? Man, I've been asleep <laughs> since nine o'clock. What are you talking about? So again, like I'm the same way. I mean, I, I was I was working out this morning. I was like, I have a great idea. And literally I do, do a memo right there because you know how it is, right? You get a good idea and then you go around, you do something, you're like, what, what happened? And then you're just kicking yourself. So I love that app. Okay. So the last question of the big entrepreneur three is what is your favorite business or philosophy or self-help book? And why is it your favorite? So I had a hard time narrowing it down between two. One is clockwork and one is um, built to sell. And while I don't think I'll sell my company, I really love it. I love what we do. I don't anticipate that's going to happen anytime soon or ever. How they talk about or how they talk in those books is really like building a team that can run things for you while you're out. And since we want to evergreen, since I want to spend as much time with my family and have as big of an impact as I can in my business, it really aligned with what I was looking for. And it gave me some practical tips to be able to set our business up. So that even if we don't ever want to sell it, we have uh, things set up that I can step out of the business whenever I need to. If we have another baby or something like that, I don't feel like I have to come back to work right away. Well, that's uh, that's another book that's going to be on my list as well. So I love that. I haven't read that yet, but I'm definitely put that on the list. So we're going to go to another segment here. And I love this segment because, you know, so many people, especially on social media, right? You're, you're following different people and they're like, their life is so perfect. Oh my gosh, they had everything together. Oh man. And then you look at yourself like, man, I have nothing together. But what we don't realize is that all the success that you see that people have, it's built on the failures they had in the past, right? The build on the obstacles and, and all the doubt and all those different things, right? They just don't put it out there. So I'm really big on whenever I bring on just amazing entrepreneurs such as yourself, I want to hear about the, the, the mistakes. I want to hear about the, the issues you had in the past. So I call this segment learning from the past because that's what we all do. And the first one's a big one. Okay, Brittany, the first one's a big one. And that is, what would you say? And if you're like me, you probably have a ton of mistakes, but pick one. Pick one that that stood out, but also something that you learned from that was significant. So what is a, a big mistake that you had in the past that you learned from? 
So I love this question and I love mistakes. I love making mistakes. I heard a client that I was working for at the time, she said something like her goal is to make like 17 or 27 major mistakes a year. And by the time, if I remember right, by the time she got to like mistake number seven, she had tripled her business or something like, like some crazy wow. high number. But I thought it was really interesting focusing on like it, embracing failure, embracing mistakes. So I've made a lot of mistakes, a lot, <laughs> like every week. <laughs> <laughs> but I think my biggest one was trying to fit m my abilities into what I thought I was supposed to be doing. So I'm definitely the creative. I'm definitely the visionary. But I thought I had to be the implementer. I thought I had mm. to be the one doing all the things. And it was slowing us down. I was the bottleneck. And so since I've stepped out of that role of the implementer and more into the role that I am really like uniquely suited for in our company of like being that catalyst, being that inspir like inspiring people through our message and, and doing all those things. My team has been able to flourish as well. They've been able to step into their like zone of genius. And it's so cool to see how much happier uh, we are, how much happier our clients are. Like everything is so much smoother when we're all in the right seat on the right bus. And so I think one of my biggest mistakes was just getting in my own way and, yeah. and feeling like I had to fit into somebody else's mold because that's what I've seen done before. And so, I, yeah, I, I would say that's probably been one of my biggest mistakes. And I'm super glad about it because now I know I can do exactly what I want to do and my yeah. team can do exactly what they want to do and we can flourish. Well, I want to tell you this, Brittany, there's so many people that probably have made that mistake or possibly about to make that mistake. And so the fact that you just laid that out, it's going to help so many people. And again, I am also a, a victim of that as well. So it, I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Now, if you, if we can get into a, like a DeLorean, you know, if we can get into like a hot tub time machine or something like that, and we can go back in time, right? And we can go back in time and, and we can talk to the younger Brittany, Right. And we, and I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll make it easy for you. You don't have to you pick like a certain time, right? It could be high school, college. Uh, you could go all the way back to elementary school, whatever you want. Right. So pick a time. And what would you say to that version of Brittany if you could do it? What advice would you give her? I think I would tell her to be open to possibilities that just because I haven't seen somebody do something that I want to do before doesn't mean it's not possible. And just because I haven't thought of it yet doesn't mean it's not possible. I think I've learned the most that pretty much anything I want is possible to create if I ask enough questions, if I ask how, if I ask who can help. There's really... I feel like I could really create the exact life I want down to the yeah. most minute detail. But when I was in high school and middle school and college, I would have never thought that. I thought, yeah. well, I have to do this. I have to do that because it's what I've seen or it's what I know. But when I kind of put that to the side and stepped into like this idea that I, I could do anything I wanted if I could just learn how or ask somebody. Yeah, it's been such a game changer. I love that. I love that. And you know what your answer perfect, perfect segue into my next question. And that <laughs> is if someone wanted to create like an online business like you, like what you've done, right? To where they can move towards creating something that's evergreen, right? If someone's sitting there and like, okay, Brittany, I, I just, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching right now. And I want to have a business like yours. Like you're an inspiration to me. And, and you guys are at like a meeting and you only had like a few minutes to kind of reverse engineer it. What would you say to that person? Like, if they're asking you that question, like, what do I, like, what are the steps they need to take to get to what you are doing right now? I definitely think start with a side hustle. I'm so glad I did that because it gave me a little bit of that like financial safety net, but it also helped. It also allowed me to try a bunch of different things without like this huge commitment. And I was able to kind of like, uh, like almost a tasting uh, to see what I really liked and didn't like. And if I hadn't done that, I think I probably would have been in another job I didn't really enjoy. So I'm glad mm -hmm that the job I went to afterwards, I got to try a lot of different things. So side hustle first, and then ease into the next thing. It gives you that cushion, that, that bumper room. The next thing that I would do is start building my email list right away. I wish I had started that earlier. Everybody I talked to always says, Me too. Yep. Me <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have started my email list earlier and I would have started my evergreen sequence immediately too. Even if I only had nine people on my list, I would have started it right then so that it's already done and taken care of. And the reason I would do that too is because once that's done and you have some revenue coming in from that, it gives you a little bit more cushion as well to be able to hire someone to help or to be able to pay for something else so that you're not constantly stuck in the weeds and in the implementation if that's not something that you enjoy and that's not something you're uniquely suited for. The next thing I would do is start building my network and increasing my sales skills. That's something I waited to do that I should have done sooner is working on my sales ability. 
Um, year or two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I, you know, I was like, oh, sales icky, but it's really just a matter of helping people. And so yeah. I wish that I had learned how to how to do that better at the beginning. I still would have tried a bunch of different things. I still suggest trying a bunch of different things. Like as you go along, our business has had multiple iterations at this point, and it just keeps getting better and better. So don't be afraid to change things and 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 see what you like and don't like. And then I would think I would probably come up with my first offer based on what my audience is saying. So I would be asking my list, what do you need help with? How can I be there for you? And I would go all in on them or with them. So I would be doing lives. I would be doing podcast episodes. I'd be writing blog posts. I'd be sending emails, anything that I can do to guest expert interviews, anything I can do to help my audience. That's what I would be doing. And then I'd make that offer to them and continue to make it better, continue to listen to what they say that they need and go from there. Well, I'm going to say this. I mean, that right there, that is thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars of advice for free right there. I mean, that's amazing stuff there. I, I absolutely love it. And I absolutely love your story, Brittany. I love what you're all about. And, you know, for those who are watching, for those who are listening, what's the best way if they want to hey, get some of these email sequences, right, for their business or for their, their program, what's the best way to work with you? What's the best way? Yeah, so we have done for you, done with you, and do it yourself. So it really depends on what you're looking for. For my people out there that love writing and that you can just bust it out, done, uh, do it yourself, we have templates. Uh, for those of you that are like, I would rather, you know, sit in a well for a week than write a single email. <laughs> that done for you or do your, done with you is probably your best option. And for both of those, you can reach me um, at my email, which is Brittany at winwithsystems.com. But yeah, I, I, a lot of it depends on if you enjoy writing and if you have time. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, you know, some of, some of the, the companies that, that I work with and that are, are listening on the podcast, they have teams too. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, if you have a team that can write, then maybe they need just the guidance, right? So again, there's just reach out to Brittany because I, I'm one of those guys that I'm like, hey, Brittany, um, I kind of want like something special for myself. I want a custom <laughs> thing. So again, the best thing is, is to reach out to her and, and I absolutely love that. So Brittany, again, I am just so happy to, to have you on here. I mean, you are like a super entrepreneur with like just an amazing story. And at the end of the day, we bring on different guests to inspire our listeners, inspire our, our viewers. So Brittany, before we log off, for those who are listening right now, what is just like a, like a little piece of advice that you would give to, 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 to our listeners and our viewers? I think believe in the possibility that that is out there for you. I think that's been a, a huge leg up for us is that I am a visionary and I am wildly optimistic <laughs> sometimes about what, what could be possible. And because of that, there are things that are possible for us now. I don't think would be if I had just kept my my thought ceiling low if yeah. I had thought well this is all I can do because this is all I've seen so dream in the possibilities and step into those and and assume that it's possible for you as long as you take action I love it there's nothing else I could say to top that but I will <laughs> say this guys you know check the show notes there we're gonna have all of Brittany's information there reach out to her as well she's got an amazing amazing Facebook group I'm gonna put that in the in the in the show notes as well that's the best way and you know we we have to give a shout out she's got an awesome husband as well that's super supportive like he's like a like a like a super dad as well so yeah. Brittany thank you so much for jumping on guys thanks for tuning in we'll see you guys next time bye thank you Thank you.